So welcome to uh, my first uh, introduction to our class. As I told you, I will send you each uh, week uh, 15 minutes on uh, of reflection connected with the topic uh, which will be discussed in class and also related to the reading which I will uh, send you uh, and put on the platform um, uh, campus. Uh, and you are, of course, warmly invited to have a look uh, in this reading uh, and uh, to raise some questions, uh, comments uh, in class. I will uh, start uh, our class, uh, as I told you, 15 uh, minutes later. So not at 3 p.m., but a quarter past uh, three, in order that you will uh, already count this 15 minutes uh, watching this film. I hope that you will find it useful uh, for uh, the coming class. And uh, after we will have uh, discussion, uh, and the topic of, of our first class is uh, perhaps the most uh, radical one, but what, why not? Why not to, to start as in Hitchcock's film with earthquake and after will be more and more exciting. So this earthquake, perhaps for many of you and not only for you, for many Catholics, uh, the confrontation in a very fruitful um, way with, of uh, Catholicism or Christianity with uh, Marxism is something uh, very new, uh, surprising and even shocking. Uh, first of all, because the tradition of uh, uh, confrontation uh, between Christianity and Marxism was extremely hostile from the beginning when uh, the Communist Manifesto was published in 1848 uh, and other works of Karl uh, Marx and Engels, it was obvious that for both of those uh, philosophers, thinkers, economists, religion was not uh, a, a positive uh, activity of humankind. The opposite was true. They were convinced that uh, the people who believe in God, who are part of religious institutions, are really blind, unable to cope uh, with the reality, with the real problems. So they actually encourage people to, to, to fight uh, religion and to leave uh, religious institutions. But it was the, the beginning. And of course, uh, from the part, uh, from part of, of uh, theologians, particularly from Roman Catholic popes, it was uh, obvious that they rejected uh, Marxism as something hostile to religion, hostile to the church and uh, disturbing, simply disturbing the peaceful uh, religious life uh, in Europe, because they wrote in, Ger in Germany, so it started from Germany, but very quickly uh, uh, Marxist thought spread uh, not only in Europe, but also outside Europe. So why uh, suddenly in uh, the 60s, of 20th century uh, started this new uh, uh, phenomenon as dialogue with uh, Marxism. What what changed? Why why suddenly certain theologians, uh, thinkers, uh, decided to read carefully uh, Capital and other writings of, of Karl Marx and uh, uh, confront them uh, with uh, the traditional sources of theological uh, thinking, like the Bible, uh, theological tradition of Thomas Aquinas, uh, Augustine, um, etc., etc. So uh, the most important, uh, um, uh, first of all, the readings, right? It's perhaps. Uh, uh, it is not the very pleasant part of, of studying, 
uh, reading, but I uh, try to be careful in choosing in the, make a, for you a good choice of text really representative and pertinent to the to the topic. So um, what you will find uh, something like thirty pages. Uh, please read the particular introduction, uh, which is uh, already introduction to. Uh, 20 years uh, later to respective uh, the first edition of uh, of this work uh, exactly uh, liberation theology by Gustavo Gutierrez whom I mentioned already in our class in our first meeting but you will have a chance uh, I send you a PDF form I made xero copy of the introduction and of two chapters of the entire book, uh, which already give you a, a, a sense what the book is about. So, uh, in introduction, uh, Gustavo Gutierrez mentioned already certain reactions, uh, critical reactions uh, toward uh, his um, and his uh, colleagues' idea to developed liberation theology as a new way of theologizing. So he took uh, all uh, arguments against it, and next week we will discuss, uh, I will send you to a um, declaration made by uh, uh, um, uh, Vatican, actually Cardinal Ratzinger, who critically uh, assessed um, uh, theology of liberation, and uh, he enumerated a lot of, of uh, critical uh, arguments against. So we will study this later, but in our uh, meeting today, what I would like to to reflect on a little bit and to, to invite you to, to reflect upon why this is, first of all, uh, a positive, uh, important and necessary. It's positive because uh, uh, Gutierrez uh, rightly explained that uh, in the 20, uh, in, in 60s, 70s, it became uh, non fashionable, but simply necessary to include in th theological thinking also. Uh, humanities as such, uh, different uh, sciences, psychology, sociology, cultural anthropology. So it's not only reading and interpreting holy texts like the Bible, but also what uh, the human sciences are saying about human beings. So you cannot just close your eyes and say, well, sociology is not relevant or psychology is not relevant. Uh, but you have to include it. So it's not that you change reading as a theologian, as a religious person. You, you read the Bible, you find it useful for you, but it is, is not enough. You have to uh, enrich your horizons. And this is the reason why you look also to the capital, right? And the, 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 the event which influenced so uh, dramatically, a Catholic Church was the Second Vatican Council. I don't know how far you are familiar with what happened during this uh, few years in Vatican from 1962 to 1965. So in this, this, uh, those three years, uh, the perspective the way of perceiving, uh, of understanding, self-awareness changed dramatically because this 2,500 uh, bishops who came to Rome from around the world, they realized that the uh, world in which uh, they live changed dramatically and we have to change also our language the way how we speak about faith, how we speak about religion, how we perceive the authority. So it was really three years of very intensive exchange of ideas, of theologians who 
uh, 10-15 years uh, earlier were excluded from the church or were uh, criticized as almost heretical, they suddenly they b became experts because uh, their reflection was useful uh, in order to better understand the world in which we are living. And one of the uh, insights of these three years was that human mind, human consciousness, the way how we decide about who we are is the most important platform of human existence, right? So that the church during this uh, Second Vatican Council included, so to say, autonomy of human being as part of their own self-understanding. And uh, after this, uh, in many parts of the world, theologians who carefully listened to what happened in the Vatican, they were trying to introduce this new way of thinking, of perceiving themselves into uh, daily uh, life, daily praxis. And uh, Gutierrez, uh, in introduction, explained it. And uh, in the first chapter, uh, and exactly on page eight, uh, he exactly uh, start to uh, speak about uh, Marxism. And I will quote you just a few sentences and please uh, read carefully for yourself because it will be the matter of our discussion in class. So uh, Gutierrez is saying like this. To these factors can be added the influence of Marxist thought, this is Marxist thought, focusing on the praxis and transformation of the world. So the, the Marxist thought is thought which draw our attention to the possibility or even to the necessity, the necessity to transform and the influence the world. You, you remember, I, I said this in our first meeting, that uh, this famous saying of Marx, till now philosophers uh, describe uh, the reality and now is the time that we have to change the reality. And it is clearly connected with the basic me message of the, uh, of the Bible, particularly the second book of Pentateuch, of um, uh, five books of Moses, Exodus, where you have this performative power of religious uh, message. Moses is saying to Pharaoh and to the people of Israel that God is willing to, to liberate us. God is with us in our oppressive situation and he's helping us to, to, to free us from this uh, uh, oppressive situation in Egypt. And exactly, Gutierrez said, well, actually is very similar to what uh, Marxism is proposing in his uh, uh, philosophical analysis. And uh, again, uh, I quote Gutierrez, Contemporary theology does, in fact, find itself in direct and fruitful confrontation with Marxism, and it is to a large extent due to Marxism influence that theologians started to think about uh, word, uh, political structure, cultural conditions as something which could be influenced and could be changed. So uh, liberation theology and Marxism, to conclude, uh, are two uh, ways to change the world. And this is what makes uh, liberation theology so exciting and so new and uh, really is the most influential uh, way of making theology in, in the present day, uh, not only the Catholic Church, but also in other Christian uh, confessions. And about this we will discuss in class.